And we do that by, by really just fighting all forms of prejudice, discrimination, and oppression. Hi, we are now visiting Just Communities, and with me is Executive Director Gerald Schwartz. How are you, Gerald? Doing well, thanks. We are glad to have you in our show today. And Just Communities deals with one of the most powerful and difficult topics, which is human relations. How would you describe the purpose of Just Communities? Well, our mission is really to, we say, to advance justice, and we do that through leadership building, we do that through um, fostering change in our schools, in our nonprofits, in our communities, and we do that by, by really just fighting all forms of prejudice, discrimination, and oppression. What's the history of Just Communities here in Santa Barbara? Sure. We were, we were started as, an, as a local office of a national organization called the National Conference for Community and Justice, mm -hmm. NCCJ. And NCCJ was actually founded in 1927 as the National Conference of Christians and Jews. And it has a long legacy as one of the nation's premier human relations organizations. And so in 2001, uh, they opened this office here in the Central Coast to serve the Tri-County area. Um, that's how actually I ended up here. Mm -hmm. And um, we started out really small, just one person organization, and um, we've grown over the years. And in 2007, we, we separated from the national organization to become an independent local organization. And that's when we changed our name to Just Communities. Congratulations. Thank you. Very good effort. Now, um, I would like to talk more about your programs and services. Mm -hmm. Why don't we start with the Community Leadership Institute? How does it work? Uh, Community Leadership Institute was really one of our first programs, and it's a program that helps young people, mostly uh, high school age youth, better understand issues of injustice in the world and then develop the skills to be able to do something about it. And so what we do is we work to recruit about 50 students from all over the Central Coast every summer. Mm -hmm. And they come from their schools or they come through youth groups, and they come in generally in teams of about six to eight people. And um, we have a volunteer staff who works with them over the course of an eight-day residential program. So it's like an eight-day summer camp. Um, the staff is generally about 20 people who mostly are high school students themselves who graduated from the programs in earlier years. So it's very much about youth working with youth and youth leading youth. And um, they spend eight days talking about things like heterosexism and homophobia, talking about racism and sexism and classism and how they're personally affected by the issues and how these issues play out in their schools and in their communities. And then over the course of that week, they're also developing skills around communication and leadership, how to deal with conflict, how to um, interrupt uh, prejudice when they see it. And um, they identify the different issues that are going on in their community and develop plans to be able to go back and create change. Excellent. Now, there is a follow-up with this program, right? There is. We work with the youth year-round. Um, one of the things that we know is that as excited as they might get from coming through the week-long program, if they don't have the support um, when they go back to their schools and their communities, it's really hard for them to have an impact. But we work with them through this uh, CLI Can Do, which is a Community Leadership Institute Change Agent Network for Dismantling Oppression. Mm -hmm. And through that, the students organize themselves, they identify projects or um, work that they want to do in the community, and they support each other in doing that work and creating change in their schools. So tell me, what is the Institute for Equity Education? The Institute for Equity and Education is a five-day residential program for educators. So whereas the Community Leadership Institute, we work with the students, through the Institute for Equity and Education, we work with the adults. So we're working with teachers and counselors, principals, assistant principals, the front office staff, the district level administrators. And it was developed really as a way to help educators look, look at the issue of the, the academic achievement gap um, that exists in this community, primarily between Latino and white youth, but across the country between students of color and white students and really start to, to look at the root causes of that issue and then be able to do something about it by changing the way they teach, changing the, the policies in the school, create efforts to really eliminate that gap. I would like to know more about uh, the workplace mm -hmm. with uh, what you do with private organizations and uh, businesses in general. Do they come to you or have How's the connection? They do. We work a lot with government. We work with nonprofit organizations, community groups. Um, it could be businesses. Um, really helping them deal with any, any issues related to diversity, inclusion, and equity. So that could be everything from how do we uh, get a more diverse uh, staff uh, for nonprofits? How do we build a more diverse and inclusive board of directors? Um, why should we do that even? Helping them understand kind of um, whether it's the moral case of why it's the right thing to do or the business case of how it really enhances our organization and helps us do our work better. 
Now, how do you get funded to back up all these programs? Uh, it's a mix. We receive uh, very generous support from the local foundation community and mm -hmm. um, foundations across the country. Uh, a lot of individual donations ranging from $5 to $1,000 and everything in between. And then we also charge fees for some of our programs, um, whether that's students and families paying to come to our Institute for Urban Education um, or, or our Community Leadership Institute or schools paying to have us come in and do workshops for their staff um, or businesses you know, paying for us to come in and do workshops for their staff. That's another way we, we get our funds. Why don't we go and meet a couple of your students? Okay. I'm interested in asking them a couple of questions. Great. Let's go. We are back with two of the graduates from the Community Leadership Institute. How are you doing, girls? Very good, thank you. Tell me, what's your name again and your position? Angelica Hernandez, and I'm currently on the board of Just Communities and going to be staff for the Community Leadership Institute. And over here? Hi, my name is Raquel Bernaldo, and I'm the program coordinator here at Just Communities and the program director for the Community Leadership Institute. Now, what was your experience uh, during this training? Um, well, in 2006 was the first time I attended the Community Leadership Institute, and before then I had never really explored what racism, sexism looked like, what heterosexism, but it was definitely relevant in my high school. Um, not until I attended Community Leadership Institute did I find ways to express how disappointed and angry I was during high school that there wasn't any advocates for um, immigration rights um, and discrimination for people of color on my campus. And over here, what do you think is the most important topic that it needs to be still covered here in Santa Barbara? I think that we really need to talk about um, all of the issues um, related to discrimination and inequity in schools. I think that we need to come from a multi-issue lens because we don't come as one person in one identity. We have multiple identities. And I think that we also need to talk about youth empowerment and youth advocating for themselves when it comes to the issues that affect each of them in their own lives. Well, thank you both. Congratulations again. And I would like to close this segment by asking Gerald here, do you have any phone number or a website that people can contact? Sure, people can uh, get in touch with us either by phone at 805-966-2063 or at our website, which is www.justcommunitiescc.org. Well, thank you all. And again, I wish the best for this organization and all of you. For more information on the Nonprofit Spotlight, check our website at www.spchannels.tv. If you'd like your nonprofit featured in a future Nonprofit Spotlight, contact us at the information on your screen.